boy, did I get a lot of email from you guys wanting me to talk about this. Bill Gates is getting divorced. Do I have anything to say about that? Uh, yeah, I got a lot to say about that. Alpha Male, Alpha Male 2.0. Freedom focused lifestyle design for men. We do five videos a week here on how to make both your business life and woman life more free because you need both. If you subscribe to this channel, leave a like on this video and leave a comment on this video, you will automatically be entered into the regular drawing for my online video course on how to create location independent income, normally $1,400. We regularly announce the winners at the community feed at this channel. So many of you have already informed me like the split second it happened and here in Dubai, I'm in a slightly different time zone than most of you, but um, I woke up in the morning and got all these emails. Caleb, oh my God, Bill Gates is getting divorced, my God. You gotta talk about this. So uh, Bill Gates is a complicated topic. And so I will cover all the bases as best I can in this video. I think I'm gonna surprise some of you by the things I'm gonna say about Bill Gates because Bill Gates is one of these very polarizing figures. And as always, I look at things objectively and rationally. I don't look at things through the prism of my political beliefs or what I think should happen or the way the world should be. I look at the world the way it is and I make evaluations and assessments based on fact, not my hopes or my opinions or my emotions. At least I try my best to do that. Of course, I'm a human being, no one is perfect at this, but I'm pretty good at this as compared to most humans. Bill Gates is one of these figures today that is a very polarizing political figure. If I even say the word Bill Gates in a video, I will get several hardcore right-wing Trump guys to say, Bill Gates, I hate Bill Gates. He's trying to vaccinate me and put microchips in my body and fuck Bill Gates, ah! Okay. And then before that, you had left-wingers who said Bill Gates is evil and terrible because he's a billionaire and fuck billionaires and fuck rich people and fuck this. All right, so you got those people. Then there are a lot of people in the tech industry uh, certainly years ago, decades ago, when I was hardcore in the tech industry, who resented Bill Gates because they thought Bill Gates was successful because he was in the right place at the right time, not necessarily because he had any special talent or skill. So instead of giving you that kind of emotion, I'm gonna give you the facts. So first off, I will say, and I have said this for 20, 25 years now, uh, well before I was on the internet, public on the internet, but when I was doing public speaking and some other things, I said at the time during the you know early 2000s, late 90s, that Bill Gates is probably more responsible for more good in the world than any other single individual person in human history. Now, before you lose your fucking mind and start screaming about vaccines, let me cover the facts first, at least prior to all this vaccine stuff back in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. Bill Gates' company, Microsoft, has created literally thousands upon thousands of millionaires. I forget the number. At one point, the number somewhere around, you know, the late 90s was something like 4,000 Microsoft employees were millionaires just from their stock that they got by being a Microsoft employee. Can you name another person, any other person you can think of who has taken normal everyday people who would never start their own business, who would never be successful and turned 4,000 of them into millionaires? Now that's just the millionaires. What about the people who made, you know, 500,000, 800,000, who made far more money than they could possibly make on their own, but due to Bill Gates and Microsoft, they weren't able to do that. Now that is before Bill Gates moved away from Microsoft and started his foundation. This is before he got married, the Bill Gates Foundation, not the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Bill Gates Foundation. Bill Gates Foundation did things like give hospitals and schools computers. Do you think that made things better? Do you think that improved the world a little bit? Uh, yeah, improved the world a lot. Then yes, he got married and he married a dominant corporate woman and the dominant corporate woman said, I want my name on the foundation and I wanna start helping poor people in Africa and Bill Gates is a beta male, I'll talk about that in a second. And he said, okay, yes, dear. And then he basically cured polio. He cured polio throughout the entire continent of Africa. Is that a good thing? Yes, that's a good thing. If I were to rack up all the good things that Bill Gates has done for the world, it would be a very, very, very large list. And I don't think you could compare that to any other single individual person, certainly in the modern era. Regardless of your political opinions about Bill Gates, regardless of your opinions about Bill Gates as a beta or as a person, regardless of your opinions about his, you know, his business practices and things like that. And I have opinions on all these things too. I'll get to all those things. But again, you have to look at the facts. Bill Gates 
has been a net positive, at least up until this vaccine stuff, for not only the United States, but for the world. He's done a lot of good. And to say he hasn't is to deny the facts, and that's not something I do. Now, in terms of the vaccination stuff and trying to microchip everybody, and that is a very big, complicated topic, I am not pro-COVID vaccinations. I am also not an anti-vaxxer. To get that out of the way, because I know I'm going to get questions about this, because I often do, I will not take a COVID-19 vaccine unless I am forced to, meaning that if every country in the world mandates that you have to have a vaccine stamp or something on your passport, and there's no legal loopholes around it, and there usually is, if literally if it comes to that, then okay, I will get a vaccine. I am not an anti-vaccine person. I would just rather not get it. And I can describe all the reasons and details and the fact-based rational reasons why I had to do that. That is a topic for another time. So the point is, I'm not a big fan of rushing out vaccines and shoving them in my body, but I'm also not one of these crazy Trump anti-vaxxer people. I'm neither of those things. Do I agree with a lot of Bill Gates' political opinions or opinions on how to run the world? No, I do not. As I've written about extensively at my blogs, high-end billionaires are globalists. That's just part of the deal when you're a high-end billionaire. Yes, there's one or two exceptions, but to be a high-end billionaire is to be part of the system. And when you're part of the system, you don't want to change the system. You want to keep it rolling. So no, I don't agree with his political opinions. Now, Bill Gates as a person. Is Bill Gates a beta male? Yes, of course he's a beta. The world is full of high-income, financially successful beta males. Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, and these guys have really fucked up relationship lives because they're betas. Elon Musk has been divorced, what, three times? Jeff Bezos just got divorced a while back? Yes. And what's fascinating to me is a lot of the emails that I've gotten are guys who are surprised. They say, you know, I'm so, I was surprised to hear that Bill Gates, a super powerful multi-billionaire who is a beta male, got divorced. How monogamy didn't work out for him. I was surprised to hear this, Caleb. Long-term monogamy does not work. I don't know how many times I got to say it. When you are very, very wealthy, the odds of you getting divorced go up, not down. And when you marry a dominant woman, your odds of divorce go up, not down. So let's talk about Melinda Gates for a minute. I don't know her well. Um, there is someone in my family who works directly with Melinda Gates. But I have never met Melinda Gates. I haven't done a lot of reading on Melinda Gates, but I know peripherally interviews and things she's talked about and other things from Bill and Melinda Gates history to know that very clearly she is a high powered, dominant corporate woman. And as I've talked about many times, when you marry a high powered, dominant corporate woman, she's gonna try to run your life. And if you don't like that, then you're gonna have conflict and your odds of divorce go up. Bill Gates is a beta, but he's not a pussy. Do you think when Melinda Gates started bushing him around, he said, yes, dear, yes, dear, to literally everything? No, there was some pushback. He's a billionaire. He's a CEO of a successful company. Yes, he's a beta, but he's not a total pushover, rollover beta. Matter of fact, there was a story. This is out of Melinda Gates' own mouth. I think this was back in 2013 or so, where um, Bill Gates, for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which Bill Gates started as the Bill Gates Foundation, and he later added his wife, he wrote a letter, he writes a letter once a year to the people in the foundation. And one day Melinda Gates wanted to write the letter or write half of it to give the woman's perspective or something. And he said, no, no, I'll do it. And apparently, based on what Melinda Gates said, they had a huge argument and they were screaming at each other. And I don't know if that was the beginning of the end or not, but I'm sure that was not the only huge argument that couple had. I'm sure they had many, many arguments. One of the things I've talked about is when an alpha male 1.0, which Bill Gates is not, marries a dominant woman, that is an explosive combination. Not marries, but just even dates, gets into a relationship with, because these are fundamentally incompatible personality types. Now, Bill Gates is a high-end beta male, but he was not on the total submissive side of the spectrum. Had he been, this marriage probably would have worked out in terms of no divorce. I'm sure Melinda would have cheated on him on the side. I don't know if she already has, who knows, but I'm sure that would have happened. But in terms of getting divorced, the marriage could have lasted or at least lasted much longer. But because Bill Gates is not a complete pushover beta, there was pushback and there was conflict. Next thing, I am reasonably convinced, I'm not 100% convinced, but this is something I would bet my money on. I would bet there is a more than 50% chance that there is a third person in the picture. Either Bill Gates was seeing someone or more likely she was seeing someone. And I would put that at about 65% chance 
65% chance, and maybe you'll find this out 15 years later when she writes some tell-all book when she's an old lady, that we may find out 15, 20 years from now she had a little boy toy or boyfriend on the side and got tired of Bill Gates' crap and said, well, I can divorce him and get tons of money. I'll cover that in a second too, and I don't need this guy. Yeah. Um, she was a successful woman on her own, although she was part of Microsoft. I'm sure her net worth is just fine, with or without a prenuptial agreement, which I will cover in a second. I'm sure she'll do just fine. She can pick any guy she wants. Now, the next topic on this, and I have written about this extensively at my blogs. People seem to think that when you get past age 50, you've made it. You've reduced the odds of you getting divorced. If you just get married post age 50, Caleb, then you're okay. Incorrect. And that's one of the reasons a lot of people are surprised that Melinda Gates got divorced at age 56. wrong -o, as I have written about and shown links to at my blogs. The number one age demographic where divorce is rising the quickest are people in their 50s. The divorce rate for people in their 50s has quadrupled since the 1990s. Just in the last 20 years, that segment, the divorce rate has quadrupled. So in the olden days, you could say, okay, once you're 50, get married and marry another person in their 50s and then you'll be okay. Not anymore, and the divorce rate for people in their 50s is still going up as the divorce rate across the board is going up, as the Western world continues to collapse, and as various other economic conditions change. Topic for another time, I've written about that extensively. But yes, of course she's gonna get divorced at age 56, and the reason, one of the primary reasons why people in their 50s are getting divorced more than ever before is because women used to look like crap when they were in their 50s. So imagine 30, 40, 50 years ago what a woman in her 50s looked like. She looked like a little old lady. Is that a women look today in their 50s? Women in their 50s today? No, a lot of women in their 50s look goddamn good. Or at a minimum, they look good for their 50s. Some of them don't even look good for their 50s, they just look goddamn good. Women and men are aging better as time goes on, which means a woman getting into her 50s still knows she has some decent level of attractiveness, so she can dump this schlub, or whoever it is, or this irritating billionaire husband, whoever her husband happens to be, and she knows she can go replace him. Whereas in eras gone by, a woman in her 50s looked like a hunched over little old lady, and she knew if she got divorced, she'd have no options. So that isn't the case anymore. I'm not saying Melinda Gates is super good looking, but she doesn't look like an old lady, does she? You think Melinda Gates will easily be able to marry someone else? Yes, of course. Now that brings me to the next topic is hypergamy, hypergamy, hypergamy. This red pill obsession with the word hypergamy. People seem to think that if you make a lot of money, then you can marry a woman and she'll never leave you. Bill Gates is the third or fourth wealthiest man in the world, and his wife just left him. So what happened to that theory? wrong -o. Women leave men. Women are biologically hardwired to eventually leave men. Do they leave men 100% of the time? No. But even then, when they don't leave a man, they have to fight their own biology in order to not do that, the same way a man has to fight his own biology to not cheat in a long-term marriage or long-term relationship. It's the same thing. So you becoming a millionaire, billionaire, whatever number you have in your head where you think, if I make a lot of money, then I can marry a 10 and she'll never leave me, wrong Oh, You might be able to marry a 10 and then she'll divorce your ass and go find someone else. Which is exactly, by the way, what Melinda Gates will do. Now, do you think Melinda Gates divorced Bill Gates because she wanted a guy worth even more money than him? No, watch, she will end up with a guy worth less money than Bill Gates. So this hypergamy thing is not as literal as people think. Women leave men irrelevant of high status, low status, what have you. Women leave men. This is why when you settle down with a woman, you must do it in an OLTR fashion like I did, where you have numerous legal, financial, and international barriers between your money and her money, not just a prenuptial agreement, because those don't work anymore, lots more things on top of that. So when, not if, when you get divorced, your money is protected. I am married, but Pink Firefly had to sign a, pay, a stack of documents this big notarized and witnessed by multiple attorneys in order to marry me, in order to settle down with me. I'm covered. Now, that brings us to our next topic. Do you think Bill Gates had a prenuptial agreement? I don't know, and maybe some of you have done more research on this. I am reasonably confident he did. I'm pretty sure he wasn't that stupid. I'm sure he has some kind of prenuptial agreement. But, as I've explained before, prenuptial agreements do not mean woman gets nothing. Prenuptial agreements define what the woman gets when the divorce occurs. My favorite example is Donald Trump. When he divorced his first wife, Ivana Trump, back in the 80s, 
He had a very rock solid prenuptial agreement, yet he had to give her 25 million. Well, why did he have to give her 25 million if they had a prenup? Because in the prenup it stated, if we get divorced, here's your 25 million. So I am sure Melinda Gates has something in the prenup. That strong woman, are you kidding? You think she just sat there and said, okay, I won't get anything. No, I'm sure there's a big giant hunk of money that she's gonna cash out with from Bill Gates' wealth when they get divorced, even though they had a prenuptial agreement. Next topic, and I discussed this when I talked about George Clooney and his marriage to whatever her name is. When you are worth hundreds of millions or billions of dollars, getting divorced is not the big deal that it is for people like you and me. It really is no big deal. Ultra wealthy men just don't care. They just don't give a shit. Even if they don't have a prenuptial agreement, they go, okay, and they just get divorced because they have so much money, their lifestyle doesn't change. If you were worth a billion dollars, let's not even use that. Let's say you're worth $500 million. Okay, that's your net worth and you didn't sign a prenup and you're married and she divorces your ass because she gets tired of you one day, which she is biologically wired to do. You have to pay her 250 million. Do you care? I mean, yes, some numbers on a piece of paper change somewhere and maybe philosophically you may have a problem with it, but does your lifestyle change at all in any way whatsoever? Do you even notice in terms of your day-to-day -day lifestyle and your business structures and things like that? No. I personally know a guy, I think I've mentioned it before, years ago, where he got divorced, and at the time of his divorce, he was worth over $100 million. He was worth, I think, around $120 million or so. And his wife at the time said, I'm gonna divorce you, take half your money. And he goes, okay. And he basically, not literally, but pretty much this is what he did, opened up his checkbook, wrote her a check for $50 million, and handed it to her. He said, here you go. And she's like, oh. And then she left with $50 million in her pocket. And he didn't give a shit. I talked to him several times about this. He's like, I don't care. What difference does it make? Oh no, I only have $70 million left. There's no difference in my lifestyle. There's no difference in my business. There's no difference in my life other than this bitch isn't in my life anymore and I can go get a new one, which is exactly what he did. So when you are at that level of a lot of money, divorce is a little different. That's why you see these Hollywood actors or some people in the sports industry who are worth a lot of money and they get divorced and divorced and divorced and just divorced over and over again. People go, why are they getting divorced? because they really don't care. I talked about Scarlett Johansson in a recent video. She's been married, this is her third marriage. When she divorces the beta male she's with, she's not gonna care. She has so much money, she doesn't give a shit. And that's kind of how this works with Bill Gates. Yes, I'm sure emotionally he cares. I'm sure he's not gonna have a fun time getting divorced. But once he's divorced, he'd be like, okay, whatever, I'm still a billionaire, who cares? Do you think Jeff Bezos is still pissed off he got divorced? He's the richest man in the world. Do you think it matters? No, it really doesn't matter. By the way, side topic, Guys with no money, when they get divorced, same kind of thing. If you have no money, you have no net worth, you have no money, no savings, no investments, no nothing, you have no real estate, no car, you have nothing, and you make $27,000 a year and you get divorced, again, they don't care. Really poor guys and really rich guys don't really give a shit, financially anyway, when they get divorced. They really don't care. You know who gets screwed when you get divorced? Guys with some money. Guys who have a net worth, but not billions of dollars or hundreds of millions. Those guys get destroyed when they get divorced. And a lot of you are in that category, which is why if you settle down with a woman, even if you don't legally marry her, you must sign an enforceable cohabitation agreement and or enforceable, enforceable is the key word here, enforceable prenuptial agreements or prenuptial paperwork that protects your assets when, not if, when you get divorced. In addition to a bunch of other things, and the more money you have, the more precautions you need to take. That's a very big topic. That's a topic for another time. So another one bites the dust, and uh, you will see as time goes on, many more powerful celebrities getting divorced. The divorce I'm waiting for, the one I really wanna talk about, the one I'm waiting years for, is the Jay-Z Beyonce divorce. That will be glorious. I can't wait for that divorce. Oh my God, is that gonna be contentious? Holy shit. That's one of those couples that are just there because of political reasons. They make more money together than apart, so they stay married for financial reasons. Very similar to Bill and Hillary Clinton. It's one of those kinds of marriages. But anyway, I could go on and on. You get my point. Learn from Bill Gates' mistake. When you settle down with someone, make sure you are very careful, number one. Also make sure about the type of woman you marry or settle down with. If you are a dominant alpha male and you marry a dominant woman, that's not going to work. Now I'm not saying it's automatically guaranteed to work if you're a dominant alpha male and you marry a little submissive wallflower either, but your odds are less bad. They are less bad. There is a reason beyond the fact that I love her that I married Pink Firefly. 
Pink Firefly is not a big dominant bitch rocking around the house trying to, you know, butt into my business and be involved in everything I'm doing and giving me orders. It's not the kind of woman she is. And because of that, my odds of divorce aren't zero. I could certainly get divorced someday, but they're less bad than if I had married someone like Melinda Gates. Remember that. Don't forget it. If you need more help with designing these lifestyle and relationship structures, you can go to joinsmic.com. That is my monthly coaching and audio training mentorship program. Or in the meantime, you can click here for this video on George Clooney's future divorce, or you can click this video here where I ask the question, is Will Smith a beta? See you in the next video, bye.